Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you guys want to check them out. When I came up with this spray painted plaid technique many, many years ago, I had no idea that it was going to become a staple in the Tumblr community, but I love that it has. I was honestly just trying to make a plaid tumbler without spending hours on it like we do the glitter plaid tumblers and of course it just took off. One question I get asked all the time is how do different colors look as a plaid? Can you use different colors than your basic black or red colors? And the answer is yes. I love doing unique plaid tumblers. That's why I decided to create a tutorial on these colors. I used this color scheme for a plaid tumbler a few years ago and I love how it looked. So I decided to film my process on this one and I hope you guys love this color combination. Everything you see listed here will be covered in our tutorial today, but as always, if you have questions, please post in the comments below and I will come back and answer them. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you know when my newest tutorials drop. For now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this one and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, y'all, so I have already painted my tumbler. I started with a 24 plump steel magnolia. I went ahead and removed the bottom, spray painted it flat white, and then spray painted it with this ultra matte rustic pink. This is one of my favorite colors to use. Once all of that is completely dry, we are ready to tape off our tumbler. I will pause for a moment to say that if you want to see how I remove the bottoms of my tumblers, I will link a video now showing how I remove the bottoms. So the first step we're going to do is tape our painter's tape around our tumbler. I am just wrapping it around just like we were taping it off for stripes. I'm going to put another strip of tape directly beneath that one. This is going to be our spacer. Then we're going to wrap a third piece around and then we're going to remove the second piece of tape we laid down, which is just our spacer. This way we get even lines all the way down our cup. And for this tumbler, I am using three colors. You will see all three colors I'm using. I'm using rustic pink, vintage blush, and silver lilac. I like to use three colors. I feel like it gives a little bit more interest, um, breaks up the colors a little bit more. If you would rather just use two, you can definitely do that. It just kind of depends on what look you're going for. So we're applying this tape all the way down our tumbler. And the bottom one, I'm just kind of guesstimating. So I am just kind of adjusting where the edges meet. We wanna to try to get our tape to overlap perfectly. And when your tape lines are on, we're going to go outside and spray vintage blush. So when I am spraying this color, I am just misting it. And I don't know why my iPad likes to move randomly. It has a mind of its own. I don't know what's going on, but it moved up a little bit. But I am just holding my tumbler probably between 12 to 16 inches away from me. And I am just misting 
the vintage blush. So now you get to see my face versus the tumbler. <laughs> and then I noticed that my iPad moved. So we are just lightly misting. I'm just kind of looking at it to see what spots need more paint and which spots don't. Since these colors are very close to each other, I was just kind of double checking myself. And I know this lighting is awful, but I will show you what it looks like inside. Now, once this color is completely dry, we are going to remove this tape. We are going to save this tape for later. And even though these colors were similar, you guys can see there's definitely a color difference. And this was just misting. It's not a solid color. So I was happy how this was looking. So once we remove these tape lines, we are going to tape the opposite way down our tumbler. We're going to do the same thing that we did when we wrapped our tape around our cup. So we're going to lay one piece of tape. Then we're going to lay a second piece of tape, which is going to be our spacer. We're going to lay a third piece of tape and then we're going to remove the middle tape. Then we're going to use that spacer to hold our next space, and we're just going to continue this around our tumbler. Now this 24 plump worked out really well. Everything was pretty evenly spaced. Some tumblers are not quite as even as others. Um, if you notice one of your lines is noticeably thicker or thinner than the rest, you can just slightly adjust your tape lines to get them as even as you can. I never spend time measuring. It always throws me off and then I just get confused. So this is just how I do it. But this one was pretty even. I was really happy with this sizing. So now what we're going to do is take this outside and we're going to spray with the vintage blush again. So we're using the same color and we're just going to lightly mist it again. So here's what our tumbler looks like after the second spray of the vintage blush. Y'all can see I just barely kind of misted that color on top. Now this is very important. Do not remove this tape. After the second tape application, we are going to leave the tape on. Then we are going to take our original pieces of tape and we're going to tape back over the original lines. This should be your lightest color. So we taped around the tumbler, spray painted it with vintage blush. Then we removed that tape, applied tape lines going down the tumbler, spray painted vintage blush. And now we left those tape lines and we are re-taping the original tape lines. This is where a lot of people get confused because they remove the tape after the second step and you don't need to do that. So we're leaving that tape and taping again. So once you get all of your tumbler taped up, you should only be able to see a few squares. If you have more of the tumbler actually showing through, then your tape lines are not correct and you'll have to go back and re-tape. So I am letting this section play in real time because I know that this is the part where so many people get confused on and I want to make sure that this is a speed that everybody can kind of understand it. 
So we're just taping this. We, we will tape our last little section at the bottom. And then I am going to take my silver lilac spray paint and we're just going to mist that color over these squares as well. Now, if you did not want to use a third color, you can just go back with vintage blush and spray a heavier coat on these squares. I personally just like the third color. And again, when you are taping this section, we want to try to match up those tape lines as best we can. If they are off a little bit, it will show on your spray paint. It's not that big of a deal, but I just want to try to get those lines as crisp as we can. And I'm sorry if you guys can hear that noise in the background. Some neighbors in my neighborhood are doing yard work. It seems so loud to me, but I don't think you can hear it too loud on the video. I hope not anyway. So now that everything's taped off, I'm going to go spray this really quick with Silver Lilac. And then we get to do our big reveal, which is always super satisfying. Okay, so now this is the Misted Silver Lilac. And now that this has dried, we can go ahead and remove all of our tape. There is going to be no more spray painting, so we are ready to remove the tape, and at this point, you can trash all of it. And this is also why I like to use flat or satin colors, because they dry really quickly. If you used a gloss spray paint, you would have to wait a little bit longer in between sprays, for this particular tumbler, I did it all in a day. So now we get to see what those colors are going to look like. I love the vintage pinks and purples together. So I was really happy with how this looked. So I'm just going to set it to the side for just a little bit, just to make sure that everything on the tumbler is completely dry. And then we are going to be ready to apply our pinstripes. If you guys watch my videos, y'all know that I cut out pinstripes and sheets. That way I have lots of the pandy. I like to use sizes 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. So I am just going to apply my pinstripes in a pattern that I like. I am just kind of overlapping the plaid a little bit. And I am trimming the edges and I'm going to fold down the excess. And I'm going to do this all around the tumbler For every vertical stripe, I'm going to add a pinstripe. And these particular sheets of vinyl are from my local vinyl supplier, which is Perfect Press HTV, formerly JSI Signs. If you guys are in Georgia, they are located in Norcross. They have the best prices around, and they always have really good selections. They have a ton of HTV, if you guys are into that, but they also have a ton of adhesive vinyl. So now that I have all of these pinstripes on, I am going to go and wrap some pinstripes horizontally around the cup. And I'm not using a guide, I just kind of eyeball it. If y'all would rather use a spacer or something like that, you can, if that makes you feel more comfortable. And I really thought that these rose golds and golds 
kind of went with the vintage feel of the cup. So I'm going to wrap these last two. Then I am going to go back with the rose gold opal after I pick my cut back off from dropping it. And I'm going to add another of the rose gold strip going down the tumbler. So it's going to overlap the gold vinyl. So it will look like a weaving effect. So both of the ro rose gold vinyls are not going to be under the gold. We're going to have one that's under the gold and one that's on top of the gold. So it just adds a little bit more interest. And I'm also using a slightly thicker piece of vinyl for this one. The first one I believe was 0 0.05 and this one is 0 0.07. So it's just a little bit different, but it's enough to kind of, I don't know, make it stand out a little bit more. So once I get this vinyl all on my cup, I am going to take a little bit of UV resin and I'm going to seal this vinyl to the bottom of my tumbler. That is the one thing that bugs me more than anything is vinyl lifting under epoxy, especially pinstripes. So I use UV resin to seal it a lot. Um, I just never really thought to share it in my tutorials, but I guess that I should because I'm sure a lot of people struggle with the same things that I do. <laughs> so I'm just taking some UV resin. I'm just going to add the UV resin with my little silicone tool just to seal that vinyl in. If you want to add it to the top vinyl strips, you can do that as well. But I just um, set this in the sun just to cure that UV resin. And then we're ready for our next step, which is applying our glitter. So I typically use glitter glue and I thought about using glitter glue, but I like to show you guys different ways how to do things. So today we're using epoxy. This is Artistry's one to one ratio fast set. It is my favorite epoxy. If you guys have not tried it, I definitely suggest it. Um, I do have a link and discount code in the description below. And I am just using about five mills, maybe a little bit more. And I'm just covering the entire tumbler at this point. I figured that this would also be a good way to seal that vinyl down to the tumbler before I put a thicker coat on. So I am just spreading this epoxy all over my cup. If you apply a thin enough layer of epoxy, there's no need to put it on your turner because it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm just smoothing everything out, making sure the entire surface is covered. And now I'm going to take my glitter and I'm going to apply the glitter, just sprinkle it right on about an inch around the rim, just so we get good coverage at the rim. And then we're just going to angle our cup and we're just going to sprinkle this down the tumbler. Typically when I do gradients or waterfalls, I will use my tea strainer, but this particular glitter had chunky pieces in it. So if I used a tea strainer, none of the chunky pieces would come out. Um, this particular glitter is not one that I have on the site yet. This was a glitter that I kind of mixed together to see what it would look like and to decide if I wanted to add it to a flock box or regular glitter inventory. So it does not have a name. 
I do like this. I may change um, a little bit to it. I may add a little bit more to the color. We'll just have to see. But I love how this looked when I saw this pink and when I saw the pink on the plaids. I just knew that these colors would go really good together. So once I have my pink on there, I am going to add some of these snowflakes. This is also not on the site yet. So if you guys are watching this tutorial, y'all are getting some good sneak peeks of some glitter to come. So I am just kind of sprinkling this down the cup. And once you're happy with how everything looks you can just set this to the side and let it cure I was kind of moving my little snowflakes around kind of deciding where I wanted them I was just placing some with my tweezers just so I didn't get a huge group of snowflakes just kind of dumped on the cup and then some areas where there were no snowflakes. And these little tweezers come in handy. Except for when you can't pick up snowflakes like I couldn't hear. <laughs> they were not wanting to stick to my tweezers. But once this cures, we are going to be ready to apply our first layer of epoxy. I can't remember if I spray sealed this. I might have, or I just brushed it off really good. But again, we're just going in with Artistry's Fast Set. It is a thicker formula, so for colder months, like it has been in Georgia this past month, I just set my separate parts in front of my little space heater for about two to three minutes and then it's pretty liquidy so we can just smooth it on the tumbler And make sure that you get your bottom rim. I am just going around that rim just with my fingertip. We don't need a ton of epoxy on there. We don't want any globs that would cause it to sit uneven. We just want to cover that vinyl. Then I'm just going to smooth it out from bottom to top. This way I can feel if anything is not covered with epoxy, get any globs off of it. So once you have your epoxy on, I'm going to take my torch and I'm going to pop all of the bubbles. And then I decided that I did want a few more snowflakes on my cup. So I am going to go back and add a few more snowflakes and a few more of the chunky glitter pieces. Just in this layer of epoxy. So I was just dipping my little popsicle stick in there and putting the snowflakes exactly where I wanted them. There were a few spots on my tumbler that didn't have any snowflakes. So I did want to make sure that those areas were covered.
So now I was just kind of fishing out the snowflakes so that I just had some of that chunky, just the chunky mix. And I'm just going to sprinkle some of those chunky pieces on the tumbler as well. I thought this glitter was really pretty. It has a major opal shift. You guys can kind of see it in the video. It shifts from pink to blue really good. So I'm just very lightly sprinkling these little chunky pieces. It's so hard to sprinkle glitter high up with a double turner <laughs> because then the second arm just gets in the way. So after this layer of epoxy cures, I will apply one more layer of epoxy, maybe two, depending on if there is any chunky pieces sticking up. But once our tumbler is relatively smooth, so either after one or two layers of epoxy, then we're going to take this off. We're going to sand around the rim, sand any of those chunky spots down. All right, so here's what our tumbler looks like after we applied a couple layers of epoxy. I typically just use a 60, 80 grit sanding block. I just angle my sanding block along the rim of my tumbler and I just scrub. And you guys can see that I am not being very gentle. I just rough it up. Um, this way, the very top rim, about one to two millimeters, is exposed. So that way, when we apply our final coats of epoxy, we get a nice, smooth rim. We're not going to have any seals breaking because everything is going to be adhered very, very well. You guys can see that slight stainless rim. And now we're just going to lightly rough up the rest of the cup if there's any glitter pokies kind of standing up we'll be sure to sand them down and once we have everything smoothed out we're going to apply our final coat of epoxy now once your final coat of epoxy has cured your tumbler is perfectly smooth and level then we will be ready to do our glitter butt the glitter butt is going to be the very last thing that you do. So for our glitter butt, I just mixed up a little bit more epoxy. I'm just using Facet again. I am going to use this pink for the exterior cavity. I typically mix up about five mils of epoxy for the exterior cavity. It may vary slightly depending on the size cup that you are using. And we are just going to fill up this cavity, but we don't want it to overflow into the second cavity. And once we get the exterior cavity filled, we are going to go fill the larger one. I just decided to use some of this snowflake vinyl. That way we kind of pull the glitter from the body of the tumbler and we kind of add it to the bottom so it all kind of flows together. And we're just going to dump this in the center cavity. So then we're going to get our torch. We're going to pop all of our bubbles 
And once this layer of epoxy cures, I'm going to go back with a layer of clear epoxy and cover this bottom with a thin layer of clear epoxy. That way the bottom is as smooth and glass-like as the rest of the tumbler. Sometimes glitter can kind of rise to the top. You guys know what the back of molds feel like. So if you want your bottom tumbler to feel like the rest of your tumbler, you'll need to go add a clear layer on top. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love how this cup turned out. It's my first winter one of the season. And if you guys try a plaid or some version of the spray painted plaid, please post them in the group because I love to see what you guys come up with. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group or my mentorship group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.